This is a quick tutorial video on how to build a few objects in Blender and make them come alive on your loom pad. This is a short video on how to create content in Blender for your loom pad. Now, why would you want to do that? The answer to that is that it is much more expensive and much harder to create content in the real world than it is in a controlled virtual environment like Blender. So let me, let me show you. In the real world, you would ideally need four cameras. Now, I don't have four cameras. Like I said, it's, it's a costly thing to do. It would cost you four times the amount of one camera. But I do have here a rig of, of two cameras. And um, that allows me to take stereoscopic images. Um, but with the Leia um, loom pad, you, you want to have four views. So to generate those four views, if you have something stereoscopically, is still going to need some software that is going to generate those views for you. And that is done. So uh, Leia have developed that software in the loom pad uh, using an algorithm, but basically that is a guess. So it has to guess those two extra views for you. And those four views will always be a estimation of what those views would have looked like. If you actually had four cameras, then it would actually show you what is actually there. So it will always be less than reality. Uh, the algorithm is quite good, by the way, but it will never be able to um, do as good as what actually four cameras would be able to do. Whereas in a virtual environment like Blender, you can do that. You, you have um, a rig of four cameras that Leia provide. Leia actually provide those for free for you. Um, Blender, by the way, is free as well. So that you can create that content for free. Um, another advantage of doing in Blender is that you have full control over what you're doing. So with a rig like this, if you want to zoom, um, you would have to do that simultaneously with two cameras. Now, it's difficult enough doing that with two cameras. Just imagine doing that with four. So if I want to zoom, I will have to basically do this simultaneously. It's not guaranteed that one camera will respond the same way as another. So ideally, you would want some software that controls that as well, or a link between the cameras that, uh, that controls that. Now, uh, the camera inside Blender that Leia provide uh, has one control that controls the zoom of all four cameras simultaneously. It does that for you, that is provided. Um, that is one of the controls that you have within the virtual camera that Leia provide. There's a couple of other controls that I want to talk about as well. And um, the second control is your baseline scaling. Your baseline scaling allows the cameras to be spaced differently relative to each other. The, uh, your, your eyes are fixed at about six to seven centimeters apart. But if you want to see something stereoscopically that's far away, it's actually better to have the distance further away. Or if you want to have something that's closer, it's, it's good to have the distance less. Especially you imagine you have something really close, you'd, you'd go cross-eyed looking at it. Whereas if the lenses are really close together, um, when you look at it on the display, it doesn't look that uncomfortable because you don't have to go cross-eyed. So what Leia have done is they've actually provided a camera for you on the loom pad that uh, has a very close distance between the first and the second. Mind you, it's not four cameras, it's, it's two cameras, so it has to still use software to generate those four views for you in order to view it on the four view uh, display. 
Um, but they're close together. So they're ideal for things like food, things that are close, close up. They're not ideal for landscape and uh, photography that, that is at quite some distance. Um, with, with the camera, however, that you have within Blender, that layer provide, you have control over that distance. You can bring it really close together, those four cameras, uh, or you can bring it far apart, which is really good. So you've got a good camera rig that allows you to do that, something which is quite hard, like, like you could imagine, to do with four cameras on a rig. The third thing, third control that you have with the camera within Blender is the position of the screen relative to everything else that you've set up in Blender. Um, the position of the screen is also in 3D. So if you bring the screen forward, so I'm going to basically show that uh, here. If you bring the screen forward, everything else is the back of your screen in that virtual environment. That's how it will appear when you look at it on the, uh, on the loom pad. You can bring the screen somewhere in between the objects. Now, unlike a real camera, if you were to take an uh, image, you would only see what's in front of the camera. But because a 3D display has the capacity to show you what's in front of the, uh, of the screen as well, you don't miss out on that. You may have an object that is now in front of the screen, you will still see it and you will see it in front of your screen. Whereas the objects that are still in the back of the screen will still be at the back of the screen. So you can position relative to all of your objects within Blender where the screen is positioned. So that is another advantage that you have in a virtual environment. So we've talked about those three um, controls that you have on your camera within, within uh, Blender, the baseline scaling, the convergence plane, and the camera focal length. We'll be looking at how that is controlled once we dive into, into the Blender virtual environment. But before we do, just a couple of other things. This is not a tutorial on uh, how to use a Blender. Um, there are lots of resources that are available for you to learn how to use Blender. I have a tutorial linked uh, in, at the bottom in the description that I think is quite useful, but there's plenty out there, trust me. Um, don't let it stop you if you're not familiar with Blender to experiment with this. There's just such potential of what you can do if you start experimenting with, uh, with, uh, with Blender. What this is, is a tutorial that is based on documentation that Leia have provided. It's good documentation. You can follow that as well. Um, again, I'll provide a link down the bottom to that documentation for this camera rig. It's, uh, this camera rig, by the way, is a template that is provided in Blender uh, by way of a project. So you can, you can open it, it's a, it's a Blender project, and you can import and create your content within that project then. Uh, the description of how to use all that is, is documented, as I say, and I'm basically just following the documentation and making a how-to video out of that. The reason I'm doing that is so that you can follow along. It's something quick and practical for you to just do in 10 minutes and, and get going. Um, so I hope you'll enjoy this. Uh, let's go and dive to the computer and um, have a look at how this actually works. Okay, so we're going to start right here at the lealoft.com site uh, to download this camera rig that we need in Blender. Uh, to do that, we'll click on Tools because that's where it resides. There's other tools here as well, but we're going to scroll down to Blender and download it from here. Okay, so off, as you can see, I already downloaded it previously. Um, but then once it's downloaded, uh, place it where you can then use it and create copies of it if you need to for, for other projects as well. So I'm going to go to where I've placed it. We'll just minimize that and open up the location where I've got it. So it's right here. This is the zip file that the download comprises of. And we'll open that up. 
and we're going to go into the layer blender SDK and in here you will see four files one of them is just a text file that describes the other three files and um, you've got two files that are basically examples you've got a Leah tutorial blend and I'm just going to open that up so you can see that example you can see in here you've got three objects you've got a monkey and a, and a couple of other objects and um, they are animated so the camera basically moves around those objects and um, if you render that you will then get the render output which is also provided to you in this file here so this is what it will look like um, in the mp4 and obviously with this being the four view file if you put that into a loom pad um, and with the extension being two times two the loom pad will recognize that as a four view file and it will play it in, in 3D, in, in the four views. What we're going to do is um, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to also create some objects, but personally I don't like the monkey too much, so we're not going to create a monkey. Um, and um, we're then going to do the same thing. We're going to create those objects. We're going to capture them with our LIA camera, and we're then going to export them uh, out of Blender and import it into the LoomPad and, and view it. So we're going to take you through the whole process, hopefully a process that you can follow. I will try to make the steps easy to follow. I won't necessarily explain, like I said, all of the Blender steps. There's tutorials out there that explain how Blender works, but I will show you all the keystrokes and all the necessary steps for you to get there as well. Okay, so we'll open up the the camera rig and I'll just quickly explain what it is that we're looking at okay so there's two 3d viewports one of them here is actually the same thing it's looking at the same thing just from a different angle uh, of this camera rig and this this camera here as well but you, you'd be wondering I guess what is this view actually looking at and it's looking at I'll highlight it with my mouse here where my mouse is that little section at the back of the camera it's got a couple of controls on there that allow you to control the focal length and the baseline scaling. Okay, so if I were to zoom in on that, um, and if you zoom in on this section right here, you can see that this is where the controls are. You're seeing the same thing as here. It's just at the back of the camera. Whilst we are looking at the rear of this camera rig, You'll notice that there are four points uh, from which um, these cameras emanate and they are basically where your camera rig resides so you've got your first camera here your second one here your third one here and your fourth one here right okay and um, if i now change the baseline scaling so i'm going to move this control here you'll see that the cameras move further apart from each other or closer together. Okay, just like in a real physical rig where I described that you would be placing cameras relative to each other in a different location, that's what you're doing here virtually. All right, I'm just going to undo that because I want to leave it where it originally was. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to show you what happens when you change the focal length of the camera now that's the zooming uh, so basically when you change that you're zooming in and out so I'll take this control here all right so I'm just here if you move that up you're zooming in further if you are taking that back then you are changing to a wider angle lens basically all right so you've got control of your zooming using that control and all four cameras zoom at the same time so you don't have to have any individual zooming like what I described at the beginning of this video okay again I'm just going to put the zoom level back where it was and the third control that I mentioned before was the actual position of your screen and the position of your screen here is in this rectangle that you see at the origin uh, it happens to be at the origin at the moment but we're as we are going to manipulate that, move that away 
uh, in just a moment. But it's just here where my mouse is. Okay, so this is this is the rectangle that we're talking about, and um, I'm going to change the location of that. Okay, so I'm going to select that. I'm now going to go to a top view of this, and I'm going to change the location of where our screen resides. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to go along the Y axis and change the location of that, right? So you can move it backwards or forwards and that way the relative location of your screen to other objects, and we don't have any ob other objects yet, but you'll see that once we do, will we'll change. Okay, so you've seen the three controls. Uh, with that, let's just um, go and build something and then have a look at what that actually looks like uh, when we look at it through the eye of that camera. So to do that, what I'm going to start with, and uh, this may be a bit surprising, just having gone through the camera, is I'm going to switch this camera off. Um, it's still there, I'm just going to not make it visible. So I'm going to go up here where the Leo camera resides, and I'm just going to hide it by clicking this button, and it's gone. And uh, from here, we're now going to start creating something quite simple, just a few spheres, and um, then we're going to look at it through the camera again. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just set some general settings. I'm going to set the number of frames for our, our animation to 600, uh, because I like setting the frame rate to 60 frames a second. That gives us a little bit more of a smoother uh, animation and to do that I will actually need to change the frame rate as well so we'll change that to 60 and that gives us six seconds of animation okay so now that we've done that let's, let's start adding some objects I'm going to start by just putting a sphere in there and the sphere we're going to make that 0 0.5 meters I'm also going to increase the number of segments just to make it a little, bit, a little bit more smooth. And I'm going to also make that object smooth by shading it smooth. Okay, so let's just go a little bit closer to it so that we can see it. There it is. The other thing that I'm going to do is add a circle. And the circle, we're going to make a radius of 5. And we're going to make this sphere that we've created go around that circle. So to do that, we're going to select the uh, this, this sphere again, and we're going to add a constraint, a follow path constraint, and we're going to select the circle for that, and we're going to animate that path. So if I now play that animation, you can see that it goes around that circle. Okay. Now I'm going to add another sphere, and this time I'm going to make it a little bit larger. I'm going to make that 2 meters in diameter, or radius rather. And I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to make the segments 100 and the rings 50. That's already the case. And I'm going to shade it smoothly. Okay, now if we were to go to our render view in the 3D viewport, you would see that it's all just black. So we're going to need some light. So to add some light, I'm going to make a point light source. I'm going to locate that at negative 4 meters, right there. And I'm going to make that a little bit stronger. So we're going to make that 1000 watts. OK. Now that we've got that, if we now look at it in our render view, you can see that we have some light, which makes it a little bit nicer. Okay, um, but to make these spheres a little bit more interesting, I'm going to add some texture to them. We go into materials, and uh, in our base color, we're going to add a image, image texture and I have already prepared some ahead of time, so I've downloaded these textures from NASA. You can see there's a Earth texture. I'll just open that. Now if we look at 
Uh, this will ro rotate it a little bit so that you can see it. There we have Earth. Okay, we also want to do the same thing with, you've guessed it, the Sun. So I'm going to add a base color to that. Same thing, image texture. And uh, open a pre-prepared file for that as well. So again, in our directory where I've got that, there is a video of the actual sun over time. So we'll add that. And we actually want that to be animated. So rather, rather than just having it um, as a picture or an image, uh, it's going to be a moving texture and uh, for that I'm going to want to have the frame there we go this is what I was looking for the frames not just the first frame but we're going to play as many frames as we can now we only need 600 I'm going to set it beyond that so we've got a thousand frames of the video to play okay um, now if we look at it you can see that there is a Sun and there is a earth um, Yet, the lighting of the sun doesn't quite look right. The lighting of the sun is... The sun isn't radiated from a light externally. It is light itself. So we're going to add another light to, to show that. Okay. So we're going to add another light. Right there at the center. We're not going to move that anywhere. We're just going to leave it there. But we're going to make the radius of that one 9 meters. We're also going to make that one a thousand watts. And uh, we're going to select the sun itself and we're going to make its transmission a little bit more. We're going to make that 0 0.1. And if you now look at the sun, there you go, it's radiating, glowing itself. Okay, which is what we want it to do. Okay, now the last thing, and this is you know, optional if you want to play around here, but I just want to make it a little bit more interesting. We can make these objects move, right? So the Earth is already moving around the Sun, but they rotate around themselves as well. So what we'll do is animate them. So I'm just going to take these back to the uh, keyframe one. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to select this auto keyframe feature. And uh, with the sun selected, we're going to now insert a rotation keyframe. Then we're going to go to the last frame. And uh, we're going to change the Z rotation to 360 degrees. So it rotates once during those six seconds. And we're going to then insert another rotation keyframe for that. So now the sun rotates 360. We're going to have the Earth rotate a little bit more than that. Um, all of this is not true to physics, okay, but it just gives a good effect. So I'm not going to have it rotate 365 times as it circles the sun. I am, however, going to have it rotate a few times more. So I'm going to Again, uh, with the Earth selected, insert a rotation there, and we're going to go to the last keyframe, and uh, we're going to now change the Z rotation to negative 1,800 degrees, and um, keyframe that as a rotation as well. Okay, and with that, we've now got our objects and animation all in place. The next thing then is to make our camera visible again so that we can see how all of this fits into the camera. And as you can see, I'm just going to remove that. As you can see, the scene fits nicely in front and the back of the actual display. So it's right in the center of it. Some parts will be in front as the Earth rotates around the sun, and at other times it will be in the back, and the sun is smack in the middle, right? So the um, 
the Lear uh, loom pad display is right here. And you can see half of it is in the back and half of it is in the front. Okay, so now let's have a look at what the controls do with objects in place. And I think it will make more sense having a look at it with objects in place because we can see how it affects the, um, the capture of our imaging. So what we'll do is we'll have a look through the camera lens. This is an average of the views. Um, the way that this is all organized is that you have five different scenes. And we are here on the main scene. And the main scene has a camera that is not actually used for rendering um, the, uh, the views, but it allows you to view an average view of the, of the, uh, of the scene. You also have, in addition to that, four uh, different scenes, one for camera A, one for camera B, and so forth, and they are your four views. Um, we are building our scenes in the main scene, and uh, that's where you do build your objects. You shouldn't build them in any of the other scenes. The other thing to note here is that they do need to exist underneath your layout collection. If they don't, then they are not tied in with this rig correctly and things will not necessarily work as intended. So ensure that as you build your objects that they are underneath this uh, layout collection here. That is, that's quite important. But you do everything here in this, in this main scene. So we're now looking at what we would on average see if we're looking through this camera rig. Um, and you can see that you can see the sun and you can see the earth here. In fact, let's change it so that we see it as it will actually appear. And of course, because we're looking at the earth um, on the other side, we're looking at its night time, so it'll be black. But as we rotate around the sun, there will be times when we see the reflection of the daytime of the earth. Okay, so let's have a look at um, moving the focal length of the camera. Now I didn't describe that in too much detail before, I will go into the detail now. If you want to change that you have to move from object mode, uh, in fact you have to select it first, so you have to select the camera rig first and then only then can you move from object mode into pose mode. You have to be in pose mode in order to change the controls. And now that you're in pose mode you can click on the focal length and uh, zoom in. or zoom out, right? So this is what you will see through the lens of the camera. Uh, of course, each will be slightly displaced due to its relative uh, baseline scaling position, uh, but this is the average of what you would be seeing, okay? Now, for our purposes, I've scaled it uh, uh, in my liking, so I'm not going to zoom in or zoom out. I've basically made the objects so that in my mind they look okay just as they are. Okay, so now the baseline scaling, that's not going to show anything here. You're not going to see any changes as I change the baseline scaling because this is an average view. Okay, uh, that we will only be able to observe when we're looking through the, uh, the loom pad. And unfortunately, you yourself will not be able to see this, even if I videotape it for you, because it is the 3D effect that has changed. It's how much depth there is that will be different. Okay, it's your eye distance that you're changing here. Um, the other thing is, of course, where your screen is located, and we've talked about that before. So if I now go back here, the screen is nicely located in the center of that rig, as I've pointed out. I'm going to leave that that way as well, but you can, of course, change that. So that uh, the screen, and I'm going to go back out of pose mode into object mode for this, as we have before. Um, I'm going to select the um, screen, and I'm going to now, along the y-axis, change that. So you can have the screen in front of all of that modeling, in the center as we've had it, or, or the back. And I'm going to leave it at the center. 
Okay, with that, let us now export this and have a look at what this looks like uh, on the loom pad. So we need to render it. Okay, but before we actually render it, um, you probably want it in a format that uh, the loom pad understands. And um, we could put it out in a whole lot of PNG files, which is what um, Blender will output for you. But that's not going to be a video that you can play. It's just going to be a whole lot of files, 600 of them, that you can look at. Now, if we want it to be a video, we can either do that externally. We can take those PNG files and in Premiere Pro, um, make them a sequence and then export them as a video. That's one easy way of doing it. Uh, but you may not have Premiere Pro, so I do want to show you a method here that you can use uh, to create a MP4 video. So to do that, go to your uh, output properties, as you can see right here, and um, go to your output. If it's not expanded, expand it, and you can see that the file format is PNG. We want to change that to FFmpeg video. And uh, once we've done that, we'll expand the encoding of that. And we want that to be MPEG-4. And the quality, um, make, that a, make that a higher quality. Make that uh, perceptually lossless, right? Um, that way it's almost lossless, but you don't lose the extra margin. Uh, of size that you would have if you actually went lossless. And um, that will now create a video instead of a whole lot of files that you have to merge together. So having done that, you now go and render that. So we'll go render, render animation. And away it goes. Last time I did this, this took six hours so um, you'll need a little bit of patience uh, i have experimented with this a little bit as well and um, there are ways of speeding this up i might make another video on that in fact you can speed it up significantly by doing some manual hacks but for now let's just wait i'll i think i'll come back uh, when this is done I'll see you. Okay, I hope you did something useful during these few hours whilst this was rendering. Let's have a look at what we've got. At the end of this, you should have a file, unless you've actually specified the file name, that's got the sequence numbers from 1 to 600.mp4. Uh, so if we play that, you'll see that um, you've got uh, one rotation of Earth around the Sun. Not quite in the right physics, as I've said, but uh, something visually pleasing to look at. Okay, so with that done, we now want to put it into a format that the um, loom pad can recognize. So we're going to have to put this into underscore two times two. And that way, the loom pad will know that this video is a four view um, video uh, that it can then play back in its four view mode. 
So what we need to do now is plug in our loom pad and transfer that file across. So uh, let's do that. Let's let's plug it in. And um, here we go. We're plugging the uh, loom pad into the computer uh, through a USB port. Let's go into this PC. And uh, here we'll have a look at what happens uh, on this end when we plug in the uh, loom pad. Uh, when we plug it in, it will appear under devices and drivers right here as LPD-10W. And uh, once you've allowed uh, navigation to files, you can drill into that. And uh, we'll go to movies and we will place our movie file that we have rendered right here and drag it across onto the loom pad. Okay, so there it is. So now we'll go back to the loom pad and have a look at what we can see. Okay, so let's open up this video with Layer Player. And for that, we'll navigate to Movies because that's where we've placed our file. We'll open up the video. There you go. Now for your purposes, I'm just going to turn the screen a bit so hopefully you can see some of the 3D effect. Now just for your benefit as well, um, I have also placed the result uh, of this video onto layer stream. Uh, to get to that video, uh, have a look under the category of relaxation. And I've called it Earth Dancing Around the Sun. So I go into that and uh, you can view it there as well. I hope you found the video useful. Now it will really depend on your context as to whether you're gonna be using Blender or whether you're going to be doing photography or video taking in the real world. Obviously there's just some things that are just too complex to create in Blender and uh, nature in, in its way is just uh, something that is best sometimes taken in the real world. So, I hope that uh, you will find it useful, but obviously it depends on your context, like I said. Now, if you have already created content in Blender and invested a lot of time in that, I would say that it would make sense for you to put that camera in there and have a look at it in 3D uh, on your loom pad. It's already in 3D and uh, it just makes sense to bring it alive, to look at it in 3D. I find it quite rewarding when creations that you've made in 3D and you look at them and say, wow, this is, this is actually what it looks like because you'll never see it uh, in 3D the way it actually is unless you see that perspective. So I'd encourage you to uh, put your uh, four camera rig into your projects and have a look what it looks like. Um, I hope you see the potential of what you can do in Blender. Um, you know, one of the advantages is that you've got full, full control of your distance of the camera. Um, in the physical world, uh, as we've seen on the loom pad itself, compromises are made. You've just got a fixed distance, which is other than your eye. Now, imagine that your eyes were that distance and um, you were driving along in a car and you only see a truck that's speeding towards you just a few meters before you stereoscopically, I think that would be a problem. I'm quite glad that my eye distance is what it is. Um, but for artistic purposes, um, obviously compromises like that are quite viable. Um, 
I'm quite excited about being able to play in the Blender environment to create things. One of the things I'm going to be experimenting with is real-time changing of the baseline scaling. Just imagine you have your camera focused somewhere close and you have an object that you're looking at and then you lift up that camera and you change your baseline scaling from being close together to far apart to a mountain landscape in the distance. I wonder what that looks like. What would that be? How, how would that be if your eyes were changing their baseline in real time? What does that feel like? So that's the sort of thing I'm quite excited about trying out and uh, will be the next thing that I'll try out in Blender. So I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this video, uh, like I said, and um, thank you for watching and God bless.